Desert Divers. So that is his 12th race, seven wins, six G1s already for Desert Diver. Holy cow. Now he's going to be on, I mean, this is essentially going to be his, uh, his, um, his last couple of, I would say, races at this age before he's on the decline. But he still can run. He should still be good until he's about five and a half. He won't really start dropping off until seven and a half, eight. So we can still even keep him around for another two years. You know, I'll just drop him to some G2s and some G3s. See if we can get him in another GWS. And let's see. Desert Diver goes 10 to 14. We can run him in the China Cup. It's a little bit later than usual, but what's the winnings for that? 14K? I think that's uh, worth it, to say the least. Now, does he have? He has no abilities, but he's also one of those horses I think is just going to be a good horse to use, you know, as, as a stud just for his stats. 92 Hartness. You guys know I'm a big fan of Hart heart ratings his temper is 30 and i wouldn't even know it because he hasn't really displayed any of that from what i can remember i can't i mean we've won six g1s with him i can't recall many times where his temper flared up which is so weird because aunt b's temper is is at 22 so you know desert divers temper rating is only eight points above hers but he seems to be so much more calmer and easier to control than her let's look at her her temper is 22. Her response is only 46, so that's also a thing. His response is like 86. So even though he his temper is not great, he has much better response. So that may go into it uh, as well. So Blues Breeze is up. We haven't raced with this horse in a while. And the King Cup Autumn going 10 furlongs on Zatif. Like I said, I'm done looking for those my horses. Game has made it clear I'm not going to get them back. You want to battle me? Um... You're racing me with fast. You're racing with one of my favorite horses of all time, Fast Navy. Not going to do it. I love Nat, Fast Navy, but I don't want to take the unnecessary challenge right now. Ten furlongs, I'm, I'm, I'm iffy. I feel better challenging jockeys with shorter races, longer ones. Sometimes you never know what's going to happen. Again, long field. and good. I didn't challenge him because Fast Navy is supposed to finish second. We're supposed to finish fourth. Something told me we may not have been the favorite here. Field of 14, we're going to go through it very quickly. 13 is Fast Navy, the favorite, well, second favorite, excuse me, written by Nielsen. 14 is Lonely Glory, written by Kelly. To the one horse we go is Eastern Knife, written by Valdez, third favorite. Two is Rose Walk, written by Hunter. Three is Red Ending, written by Capel. Four is Joe Bree, or Joe B. Free, written by Lakeys. I wish more horses had names like that in this game. Five is Winged Cat, written by Gibson. Six is Sedate Devil, written by Hanson. Seven is Formal Chief, written by Johns. Eight is Noble Shade, written by Alder. Nine is Only One Brave, written by Dean. Ten is Frugal Lark, written by Harris, favorite in today's race. I recall this horse, it always beat me in Gallup Racer 3. Eleven is Loud Groove, written by Ross, but we're on the 12, Blues Breeze. We got finished top five, so easy target, no pressure. We run a good race, conserve stamina. Top five is definitely manageable. We could potentially win. You know, we're not the favorite. We couldn't, we can potentially win if we run a great race. It all depends on what happens with the AI, what our positioning is looking like, how much stamina we got left, all that, when we make our move. So we're gonna be sitting behind the field. So positioning is gonna be really crucial here. So I'm gonna see what the rest of the field does and then kind of use that to dictate where we're gonna try to position Blue's Breeze. Of course, I'd rather keep him outside. Inside trips are great, but I mean, you're, you're gambling with that because that rail doesn't always open up, especially in this game. Real horse racing, it's, it's probably more likely you can get an inside trip. Gout Racer, gambling on the fact, not even the fact, gambling on the possibility of the rail being opened for a trip in the stretch. Yeah, no. I would rather not. So pace has been pretty fast, which is a little bit worrying. Pretty fast, but I'm going to make sure we keep Blues Breeze kind of on the outside of these horses because we know they're going to fan out. So I'm going to run them a little bit deeper here on, on this, um, this curve here. So this must be one of those tracks okay, this is where the race with uh, a long straight. So i got to get them going now. Make sure we got our positioning because we know what's going to happen with these horses. That 13, that's the favorite. That's Fast Navy all the way up there. We're going to challenge him. We're 
We're going to challenge. Not going to put him under the whip. Now we're going to go. Can we catch fast Navy or did that horse just really just get out on us? We're catching. Don't know if we're going to get it out the wire. Wow, and Blue's Breeze actually gasses out here. That's... Huh. So Blue's Breeze, 10 furlongs too much? That's a terrible effort. Fast Navy still 6th place. I mean, we were supposed to finish 5th, but that that didn't feel good at all. But nah, Frugal Lark actually won, which he should have. Fast Navy came 2nd. Pace Judge, not good. I mean, what was I supposed to do? If, the, if I could have kept Blue's Breeze at the very back and just waited to move him extremely late but we weren't gonna win i was was still trying to be competitive but pace was fast frugal lock and fast navy in a distance race is usually always going to dictate a fast pace you, you can't get around that well that didn't go as planned it is what it is um is blues is he passes no he's uh he's just about to be on the decline okay um does he have any abilities i can't remember close race okay all right that's better than having it the opposite. Um, I'll be ready to go again. We can try him in the Young Mile Cup. I'm going to skip the post parade for that one. We're just going to go right into the race because it's happening really soon. You got two more races this month. And then uh, the rest will be next month. And that's how we'll close out this year. Which is a pretty good year, I think. Like I said, average-wise, we're at 48. Still close to 50. Leading-wise, we're fifth. Nine G1s on the season. We've only won... In place, we haven't sh th came in third at all. So that means I have 33 meets this year. We have finished in the top three 21 times, and the other 12 have been outside of the top three. That's weird. <laughs> we have never come in third. That's so odd. All right, let's race here. Who wants to challenge me? Natalie, uh, I don't know. I would challenge you. You're on Laughing Hawk, which is a good horse, and I know you guys have told me to get him. I'll try. Yeah, we're not. Natalie, I love you, but not doing it. Not doing it. Would rather not get myself into that. Uh, so, like I said, we're not going to the post parade. Full field of 14. We are the favorite here with Blues Breeze today. Uh, we're running against Laughing Hawk again. Like I said, no other horses. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if we're able to win here, first or second. So we got a little bit of cushion and leeway. See, we somehow don't come in first, but we, we we should come in first. Maybe the distance was a little bit long. Let's see, Blues Breeze. He can run ten, but that's just about at the edge. <sighs> I gotta look at his stamina again too. His stamina may not be as great as I thought, so I may need to keep him to like eight furlongs and under. Almost a great start. All right, move him to the inside, and we'll just keep him tucked in here. We'll see what happens. He shouldn't be leading, and it looks like we still are. Hopefully, that thirteen able to get out ahead of us a little bit. Oh, he's still leading. I pulled him back just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. I want to let the 13 try to get ahead of us. All right. There we go. Don't bump. Don't bump. No seven. It's fine. Uh, I mean, we have good positioning right now. Okay. Now those horses are going to try to overtake. If they move inside, which they do, uh, the inside, I don't think it's going to be open. So. Okay. This is where the race is won. This is actually okay. I'm not worried. We'll, uh, we'll make room. The inside could clear up. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, perfect gap. Oh, no. We got held up. Got held up. And they're in the home stretch. Oh, you're gut. Don't move it. <sighs> Come on with the the movement. Now the inside is free, but it might be too late. We got a furlong to go, and we got a long way to catch. Oh, that screwed us. That so screwed us. Oh, it's <sighs> There's nothing I can do about that. It's nothing I can do. That's just that's two bad performances with Blues Breeze. Um, 
I mean, the gap was there, and then, of course, typical AI stuff. Move in front of us, what's new? Just, it happens so much. Fortunately, not in this episode, or these episodes, but... That's frustrating. I, I gotta redeem myself with Blues Breeze. Uh, those are results that shouldn't even be happening. Let's be honest. I'm gonna drop them in class to, like, a G2 or a G3, because... I don't want to continue to struggle with the G1s. I'm going to put them in a G3 going 9 for long, so that's fine. We'll have a handicap. But yeah, that, that, that shouldn't have been happening. That's just, that's, yeah, is what it is. Is what it is. Because it's part of the game. Me complaining about it every time it happens will solve nothing. So I'm just going to be like, yep, it is what it is. Bionic Monster, G3, he's the favorite, as he should be. I mean, this is still a G1 horse, but we're just dropping him in class to kind of finish him out here. So, winner place should be an easy win. I just got to redeem myself with Blue's Breeze. Those are two G1s. Well, technically, that last G1, we were the favorite. We should have won, I think, right? We did not, so that's disappointing. I mean, seriously, once the AI blocks you, it's really hard to bounce back unless you just have a godly horse that will just absolutely tear it up. It, it's hard to bounce back when that happens, you know what I mean? Your race is kind of lost if that does occur, so it's it's what's frustrating. It's really, it's very hard to bounce back. Like I said, every now and then you'll have a horse that can bounce back from the AI blocking you, but usually it it, it, it puts your race in a in a bad spot and you kind of are, are screwed. Um, there's really nothing else you can do if that happens at that point, you know? I thought we got him going at the right time, and then the AI moved just a little bit to the point where I had to adjust, and then obviously that upset it. Um, that uh, that upset stretch. Blues Breeze. Got a little over eager for a second, and then you know I was basically playing you know table tennis left to right, trying to get him into the right position, and that was too much time and too much ground loss. That if that race had a furlong to go, we could have caught him. Like now I got to get this horse moving because I know what's gonna happen. And I can't, my controller is not responding. But we got space now. Alright, let's roll. Whoever you are, you had a nice trip, but uh, meet me. Going right on by you. You're going right on by you. Three is coming. Three is really coming. Come on, Bionic! Close race, not. What? So close race happens even when the horse is... Oh, I hate that ability. I really do. I, I do not miss that at all. Close race happens. That's three bad performances in a row where we didn't finish where we were supposed to. <sighs> I thought close race was only when there were other horses really close to your other horse. Like within a length or two. Those horses were four lanes back. Ugh. That's annoying. Spurt drops to 97. Yeah, that's really annoying. And it's amazing we have not lost any of these horses. I was losing horses left and right everywhere. Now these... Oh, this game is so funny. This, this game is really, really, really funny. I was losing horses left and right for just one mediocre performance. Okay. I'm having pretty bad performances considering where these horses should be finishing. I'm not doing well, and the game is not taking them away. As much as we all love Gallop Racer, I don't want to see comments saying the game is not some somewhat broken. Because then you would just be completely lying to me and lying to yourself. Game is broken in some aspects. Because that literally makes no sense. I don't want anybody trying to pull a Bill Nye the Science guy on me because there's no... There's no, there's nothing to it. It's just the game is broken in that regards. The game is actually broken. You have a mediocre performance on a horse, you lose them. You have terrible performances on horses in high state races, you keep them. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we'll be 150 pounds in that race, which I don't care for. But yeah, let's let's see if we can finish out the year strong. We got six more races to go. I think that's all I'll do. Hopefully we finish out strong. And uh, yeah, but golly. Skipping post parades, you guys know, the longer I record, post parades are 
really a beginning thing. Aunt B, we are the favorite. Hopefully she doesn't get over eager. We gotta win. So with Aunt B, it's tricky. You can't slow her down too much because she'll her temper will send her through the roof, and you also can't have her going too fast and then put her behind a horse when she's going really fast. Cause that will also upset her. So you gotta really run her at like the perfect pace. Otherwise, you are risking her blowing a gasket. So I gotta keep her behind the horse and just hope that the pace is okay to the point where she won't be upset if I move her. Which, right now, this is good. If we could keep her like this for the whole race, this would be ideal. You know what I mean? And she'll be behind this horse. And I want to have some space for myself, so I'm going to move right here. Now, this is a pretty good pace. That horse is going to move inside. That's fine. I'm going to move here. No seven. That's okay. Can we squeeze through these two horses? I don't know. Probably not, eh? I can't tell. I don't think we can. Okay, now she's really dropping all this. I didn't realize they were still running. Why do they do that? They're running seven wide across. That is so obnoxious. There is no reason for those horses to be running seven wide on a race that's like eight furlongs or longer. That's so goofy. I cannot move her faster to the outside. This is all I got. They're running seven wide up there. There's like no space to go anywhere else. All right, let's see how she does. Spurt is unlocked. Had to adjust her a little bit. Let's see if she can really pull through. Look at the speed of Aunt B. Wow. Yeah. She's got the speed. I know she does. And stretch burst. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is a solid, strong G1 win. But like I said, with her, you got to run her at the right pace. You can't afford to have her running too slow or too fast because then she'll be screwed. So it's a trade-off with Aunt B. I, we all know how great of a horse she is. I know how great of a horse she is. But, like I said, that temper is something you always got to be mindful of. Because if she's running too fast or too slow, it's going to mess her up. And all that speed and all that ability goes out the window. But we get a G1 win there, as we should. Redemption feels good. That's how it should be. And I was a little bit nervous because I'm like, I'm going darn near nine wide on the outside. But, um... Yeah, fortunately, both of those abilities unlocked, so you're able to push right through. A real shame, so you only ride favorites now. This is what I mean by Turner being two-faced. One minute, he's, like, trying to be your best friend. The next minute, you're winning. He's like, ugh, you only ride favorites now. Like, dude, go somewhere. Shut up. Nobody cares. Nobody is. It's four races today. Wow. It's like, nobody is thinking about you, Turner. Like, bro, go away. Shoot. Fly away. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, let's see how we can finish the year. No other G1s for us with Aunt B. Uh, we can run her in a G3. And we'll do that. We'll run her in a G3. Close out her year. Yeah, four races today. And then we'll have Bionic Monster in a G2. A couple G1s here. And this is how we'll close out our 17th year in this game. Crazy. 17 years in Gallant Racer. 10 G1s on this season, too. Oh, what do you know? I'm not even going to look at your challenge, bro. You just insulted me saying I'm some prick that only rides on favorites. No, you can kick rocks and get out of my face. Thank you very much. Again, whenever a G1 pops up, we'll be skimming to the post parade nightclub. Okay, seven furlongs on the dirt. Fourth favorite today, so we actually got to do well. No more being able to just finish last place and just enjoy the ride. We actually got to perform well. I'm not worried, though. I think this is a great horse, and I think he's going to be a better horse as he progresses and as he ages. So fourth place, top five finish, ma very manageable. And I think we have a potential to actually win this race. Remember, our last three races with him, we were supposed to finish dead last, and we finished halfway better than that. This is a race we're expected to finish fourth. We should win. We should win. Almost a perfect start. Get him out. All right. Looking good here already. Yeah, looking very good. I'm going to move him inside. We shouldn't bump any horses. Yeah, this is super ideal. This is what you want. This is what you want from Mike Club. We are clear. Almost a perfect start. How often is it that you're able to move from gate position 14 and cross the entire field without bumping a horse or having to worry about over doing anything extra to overtake anybody that rarely happens for me because you guys know how much i hate the outside draws just because of that 
whole concept. Like, holy cow, we were able to literally move from gate position 14 across the field, not have to worry about anybody. Two sevens, we could potentially get a revolution. Like I said, this is our race to win. He was doing so well being the long shot expected to finish in last. You're telling me he's now expected to finish in the money? It's a wrap. No revolution. That's fine. But this is... One horse is coming. Holy crap, who is that? If I was a dirty jockey, I would block the one, but I'm not. One has got to be the favorite. There's no other horses challenging us. It, the one has got to be the favorite. Second place finish, though. Still, we remember, we're supposed to finish fourth. That is still a goal reach, and we barely lost that. Nightclub, this is a horse to watch out for. When he's at his peak, he is going to be a strong, tough horse to fight against. I know it. Celtic Ridge, as I thought. No other horse running like that would have made any sense if it wasn't the favorite. So, again, another great effort from Nightclub. I just, this is what I, these are the type of horses I love in this game. Easy rides. Just, it just, it's flawless. Like, it's, you don't even have to really do anything until the stretch, and then they just take off. We are coming in 30 pounds heavier than the rest of the field with Blues Breeze, and we're expected to finish 11th. So, dropping them to G3 class is too much. G2s should be okay, but G3, as you can see, huge handicap. So, what would it be if we dropped them to an open? Would it be as bad as this, or would it be worse? Anyways, we got to finish better than 11th. Considering on retiring Blues Breeze pretty soon. He doesn't, but he has close race okay. I don't know if I'm going to retire him as a stud. I initially wanted to, but I'm kind of like, eh. I don't know. I think I'll just kind of let him retire in peace. To be honest. But yeah. I'm going to turn him a G2 to see how much the handicap is. Because I wasn't expecting... I knew the 150 was pretty high. Because I don't recall seeing many horses in this game with that. But golly. 30 pounds handicapped. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's pretty funny. But it, it is what it is. I was aware of that, clearly. I just didn't really think about the fact that, obviously, most of these horses, jockeys would have came in with, like, 116, 119 weights. But like I said, 150, I knew that was going to be heavy. No biggie, though. Probably going to retire him after this year. I mean, it's been fun with Blues Breeze. Like I said, I don't think I want to use him as a stud, so... Probably just retire him after this race, to be honest. Or just keep racing him until the game takes him away from us. Could also do that. Because if he can still perform, he can still okay. finish in the this money sometimes and win us money, one. then that does help. So, he's a horse I'm not really worried about. His stamina isn't great. Got it. How long is this race? Was this 10 furlongs? I keep forgetting, too. He's not good at the distance. I don't know what we're going to do. There's like no this. There's no space anywhere. There's a little gap right there, but that horse is going to move, and I moved him too much. I cannot do anything. Eh, that's my fault. But really, the gaps weren't there like I wanted them to be. But he's showing some fight here. He's showing some fight here. Let's see if we can beat a couple of horses on stamina alone. We're going to finish better than 11th. Are we going to get in the money? No. But that was a close race. Everybody's kind of up there. Finish 8th. Yeah, so maybe we can run him in G2s. Right, we could potentially run him in G2s. Um, handicap shouldn't be as bad. But uh, not bad.